I've reviewed every album that's ever been made. Give or take 25 million. Hi, I'm your friendly neighborhood Mike the Snare. For as long as this channel has existed, I've done quick album reviews. First as one-offs, and then as a collective piece known as the Quick Review Basharu. This video is nearly all of them. Every album review I've done between February 2018 and November 2020. So the QRBs I've done for 2021 won't be in this video, nor will any QRBs I do after this video comes out. Look, I'm sorry, it's just the time travel machine just isn't working yet. Oh, and for a few albums, I'll be giving updated thoughts if my opinion on the album has changed much since I last covered it. With that, let's get into it. This is the ultra mega super huge quick review basharu. Enjoy. Is it a good blend of hip hop and Americana? Yes. Is it as good as the Hannah Montana hip hop hoedown? No, nothing ever will be. Let's start with this one. Um, I I don't know what I was thinking with this one. I, I don't know who this man is. I, I have nothing to do with him. I remember liking the first, what is it, three tracks? All the tracks up until the, the title track. Um, Filthy in particular took a while for me to, to fully click with. I think I basically had to like force myself to like it. Um, I'll also shout out uh, the track Montana. That should have been a single. That should have been something they promoted more because it's a good song. Um, otherwise, there there's no way this compares to Hip Hop Hoedown. It's basically the same as the last one, but if you like the last one, you'll really like this. It's just consistently good R&B. It's like a trip to Olive Garden. A very sensual trip to Olive Garden. On a scale from Suicide Squad to Saturday Night Fever, I give this... Shrek 2. Nothing like grooving to some tunes that make you feel bad for being a millennial. Oh yeah! Eh, am I right? Uh, no, but for real, I've, I've come back to this one uh, recently. I, I think I just stumbled upon the title track in like a random Spotify playlist or something. And that led me to check out the rest of the album again. This honestly might be one of my favorite MGMT records ever. Um, that that one-two punch of She Works Out Too Much and Little Dark Age, chef's kisses for days. Listening to this album, I just kept thinking of that hooky episode from SpongeBob. Cause it's got hooks, it's catchy as hell. got some good hooks, it's well performed, but will I remember it in a month? Maybe. In case anyone's curious, no, I, I don't remember this one much. Um, though I did like and still like the track Reagan Youth, uh, probably one of my favorite Super Chunk tracks. Okay, so this one's a bit of a visual metaphor, so see if you can follow along. Um, so this is the road, that's the left, that's the right, and where I am is this album. Cut, because it's, it's middle of the road. It, it's bland. Yes! Yes. This album is like a great night out drinking with friends. You might wake up the next morning and not remember anything specific about it, but you'll remember that it was good. And that's all that matters. I don't care how many boats Yachty has, Lil Toot runs this rap game. I can't make jokes about this. This isn't funny. And nothing is funny. The Decemberists, more like, hope I remember this in a month. Hey -o! I just wish there were songs on it, you know? I am sad to report that this album still does not have proper songs on it, which kind of disappointed me when I first listened to it. But the more I listened to it and revisiting it again, I've grown to respect the the crazed internal logic that this one follows. Um, I, I don't know if it's his best, but I honestly, I don't know. There's a case that it could be. It's It's just such a singular piece of work. And I, I, I don't know, I'd kind of like to see Jack do this kind of weird, like this weird blues rock freak out type of record again. 
At the end of the day, it's just another company trying to sell you stuff, and frankly, I think we need less of that in our lives. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and remember guys to follow me on social media and my vlog channel, and be sure to check out my merch page, my Patreon, and my new Twitch channel, where I'm going to be doing a ton of Fortnite Let's Play. If this is your first impressions of Julian's work, you might be put off at first. His band takes what you'd expect from someone who's been in the strokes and plays with it from different angles. And that approach might turn this into one big come down machine for some. That being said, each song has something memorable about it and some of them rival the best stroke songs. It may not set the room on fire, but if you've been wondering, is this it for Julian as a musician? I'd say he's still got some tricks up his sleeve. And now if you excuse me, I'm gonna throw myself out this window. <laughs> I'm just gonna come out and say it. Best pop album of the past five years. This is the second best pop album of the past five years. It's definitely the best pop album of the year so far. Here's a tip for all you indie bands out there trying to improve on your previous critically acclaimed release. Add strings. Welcome back to Cooking with the Snare. On today's episode, we're going to be making Neo Soul Stew. For this dish, just take some major nine chords, some retro synths, a healthy dose of the electric piano preset on your nearest keyboard, some fat bass, a dash of sultry vocals, a few rap verses here and there. Stir it well, throw it in the oven for 20 minutes, and you'll have yourself a darn good album that'll wow all your friends who love Tyler the Creator's last record, but who found Hiatus Coyote too hard to dance to. There's a bit on this album where they use what sounds like a creaking bed. Didn't they have any WD-40 to fix that? So I just got the letter from Mensa, and it turns out that I have the highest IQ of any person in recorded history, which means I can say with all my intellectual clout that this album is mediocre. Oh, I wanted to love this. I remember this being one of my first contentious reviews. A lot of people disagreed with me on this one, which is which is fair, but I, I just I just didn't click with it like I did uh, Vows and what was it, The Golden Age, I think. That said, like we do on the TV, still bangs one of my favorite Kimber songs. <laughs> This album has everything. Emotive performances, phenomenal instrumentation, Pharrell rapping about drinking pee. Wait, what was that third one? I could have sat in a room in complete silence for an hour, and I would have remembered it more than this album. Southern rockabilly post-punk with a dash of vaudeville? Okay. This album is actually really great for strengthening your neck muscles. Just cue it up. And there you go. I'm not even really forcing this. Really gets the spleenius capitis. This album, like this horizon, is very beautiful. But it's also, like this horizon, a flat line. Another situation like Boarding House Reach, while I don't consider it as gratifying to listen to front to back as something like Whatever People Say or AM, I... I really respect the left turn Arctic Monkeys took on this one. Um, every so often I'll get star treatment or the, the title track stuck in my head. Like the part where he's like, um, uh, Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino, Mark speaking. Please tell me how may I direct your call? Also, no joke, I did actually film this review in LA. I was on vacation with my brother. Uh, he's actually in the shot. He's down there in the corner looking like I'm about to like squash him if I lean back. <laughs> If there was any album to soundtrack a long drive with no destination, where all you've got with you is your 1999 Ford Focus and a dream, ooh boy, it'd be this one. Hey, what a pleasant surprise this turned out to be. There's a song on here called Santeria, and it's not a sublime cover, and was I disappointed? Yes, yes I was. But aside from that, it's, it's really good. Why do I feel like I just listened to a 50 minute long commercial for Coachella? <sighs> Underwhelming. I give this album four and a half Dancing Father John Misties out of five. Spooky. But also definitely an improvement over the last Kanye record. 
I'm pretty peeved that they just stole the title from my eventual autobiography, but considering how accurate it is for the music, I'll, I'll let it slide. Get your fanny packs, get your black dog hats, and get your khaki shorts! Dad Funk is back! The director of Shrek worked on this? Wait. So it turns out they don't sync up at all. Um, zero out of ten. It's their worst album yet. Dear God, please send prayers towards Drake's way, because after an album like this, he's gonna need it. You ever throw a party and you invite a lot of people, and it's fun but chaotic just because of how many people you invited, so the next party you throw you're like, alright, I'm gonna invite less people. But then you end up overshooting in that opposite direction, and you invite like three people, and it's still fun because you're friends and it's nice to talk, but you realize there's not much else to do aside from talk, and everybody's tired because of jobs and responsibilities, and it makes you wonder, maybe we're all getting to that age where partying just isn't really for us. Humility's a great track, though. The band may be called Years and Years, but the music they make stays in your head for only seconds and seconds. <laughs> that's good, that's good. See, this is the stuff that's gonna get me to a million subs. Man, there's just not a lot that came out this week that caught my attention. Did I miss anything from another week? Oh yeah! The new Kamasi Washington's really good! Also, why is that in my room? I really enjoyed this, and I would say it's the best Deaf Heaven related thing to come out all year, until I learned that next month there's a Sunbather Carly Rae Jepsen mashup album coming out. So... Stiff competition, that's all I'm saying. How can a band called The Internet make music that's this joyful and compassionate and thoughtful? It, it's false advertising, really. Yeah, it's another slow week, but also I didn't mind this all that much. I mean, it's not really remarkable, and all the songs sound like productions rather than actual performances. But the kid's got a nice voice, and he seems to be having fun, so I, I, I can't hate it too much. But I'm gonna be honest, the biggest reason I'm doing this is so that I have an excuse to play you all this. Sick production, referencing Chowder, Avatar, and Sly Cooper all in one song, sampling Woody's laugh from Toy Story. Yeah, I think this has all the elements of a good album. Well, almost all of them. It's good. This thing is like the definition of a mixed bag. Sometimes the lyrics are good, sometimes they're not. Sometimes the production is killer, other times you can't tell songs apart. Sometimes James Blake sings over Stevie Wonder playing the harmonica, and other times that doesn't happen. Lying in bed at night gives you the chance to ponder life's great mysteries. Like how the new Mac Miller album is way better than it has any right to be. So I know that Ariana has a lot of really passionate fans out there, and I, I don't want to step on any toes, because, you know, I think she's talented. So I made a list of all the good things that I liked about this album. So uh, the singles, uh, you know, they were good beforehand. Uh, they're still good on the album. Um, the strings on Better Off, those are, you know, gorgeous way, gorgeous way of ending a song. Um, uh, the upright bass on Blazed, uh, that was a really cool 
production choice. Kudos to Pharrell on that. Um, uh, oh, oh, the the synth on the chorus of successful sounds like or reminds me of uh, Animal Crossing, for for some reason. That's that's just a cute little, uh, cute little thing. Um, did I mention the singles are good? snare in his natural habitat. Let's take a look at his brain. This creature has a pleasure sensor specifically for throwbacks to 70s soul and funk. Oh, he's about to put on the new Joey Dorsic album. Let's see how he reacts. Splendid! His brain is lit up in joy. A rush of dopamine he may not feel again for quite a while. Or at least until the next Wolfpack album comes out. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Report the Snare, our top story for tonight. After mass public outcry and hysteria, as well as concerns over worldwide socioeconomic stability, the month of August has finally seen the release of a truly excellent pop album. This, of course, continues a trend that has been ongoing for the past five years. All that and more coming up in the hour, but first, an unholy abomination. The new Eminem album has left the music community divided. It is also a tiring listen, in terms of lyricism and production. So to appease everyone's opinions, as well as reflect the listening experience, here are 15 takes on the new Eminem album. All at once. <laughs> Quick question to any Eminem fanboys who are about to trash talk me in the comments. What do you think Eminem using particular slurs on this record adds to its artistic meaning? Because honestly, I have no clue what they could add. Seriously, what do they add? Before anyone says it, I'm aware that the slurs were used in reference to Tyler the Creator and how he would use those kinds of words in his early music. And hey, I, I don't know, I'm just a grown adult, but I feel like when you have the idea to diss a fellow artist by using those words, you could simply do something else. That's just me, though. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, this, this was pretty good. I think this guy's got a bright future ahead of him. How come when Jason Pierce uses ukulele on the opening track of this gorgeous and beautiful album, everybody loves it and thinks it's great, but when I try to serenade the customers of my local Walmart with my ukulele, everybody thinks I'm a loser and I get kicked out by police. I wish I could say that this was a great album by a confident, self-assured performer, and in a perfect world she'd be way more famous than she is now, and I can't wait to recommend her to all my friends, but how are you supposed to recommend an artist with no name? I mean, the album title is pretty appropriate, because I definitely did not not like this. Ooh, we got ourselves a jumper. We got ourselves a jumping bean. We got ourselves a jump man. We got ourselves a jump by Criss Cross. We got ourselves a jump by Van Halen. We got ourselves an album that jumps abruptly and quickly between different styles, sometimes within a single song, and how much you enjoy it is largely dependent on how willing you are to go for the ride. We got ourselves a jump in. How many songs do you have to hear before this album brings you cheer? Listen to this, why yes you should. This album's pretty good.
I mean, it may have its defenders, but Logic just doesn't offer that much unique as a DAW. I mean, Pro Tools is the really great industry standard, Reaper's really customizable, Ableton has all the really great software plug- Oh, the rapper! Yeah, yeah, he, he's fine. New, new album's fine. <laughs> I remember seeing 21 Pilots live at a festival right before they got big with Stressed Out and Ride, and I was with a friend who loved their music, but I also loved to tease them about their love for the band. So I remember saying something to her like, man, there are so many great bands at this festival. And also 21 Pilots. And as soon as I say that, about five young girls in front of me turn around in unison with death on their face, and they proceed to mock me for my music taste, as well as the fact that I was wearing sunscreen and earplugs. It was the worst I had ever felt in my entire life. Anyway, I'd like to take this time now to apologize to those young girls because I thoroughly enjoyed this album. Just a heads up that not only did I enjoy this album a good deal, but I've also been really enjoying the new single 21 Pilots dropped a week or so ago, even if it is a bit basic. So yeah, those teen girls were more right about 21 Pilots than I've ever been about anything in my whole life. Yeah, sure, some of the songs are catchy, and from what I've heard, it's a really good movie, but why would you listen to all of this when you can just listen to the 10 minute loop of that part in Shallow where Lady Gaga goes, ah? <laughs> the album may be called A, and Usher's singing on it is as sharp as ever. The overall production is pretty flat. Autumn leaves color the asphalt ground. A cool breeze drifts and meanders through the air. And me, blaring the new Kurt Vile album out of my 1997 Toyota Tercel. Life is good. This album gets a self-assured, if somewhat muted, yeehaw out of 10. Yeehaw. You're telling me this is an album that features captivating, energetic punk performances that sometimes utilize unique instrumentation and sometimes change genres between songs, all while keeping your attention for 90 whole minutes? That's pretty f The music on this album is destined to thrive in those raucous, grimy mosh pits, which is good because I always have a mosh pit with me going on at all times just off camera. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go join them for some moshing. Hey, is there any room in this mosh pit for one more person? Heck yeah, yeah dude, you're come on and welcome to. Look at us, moshing in this pit. How to dress well and one o tricks point never go together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich very skittish, anxious peanut butter and jelly sandwich that honestly kind of goes on for a bit too long, but I mean, it, it, it tastes better more often than it doesn't. I have a lot of thoughts on this record that don't really fit into this short review format that I do, and a lot of people have said a lot of things about this record already, so I'll leave it at this for now. I thought it was decent, but it is the most hollow, vacant, soulless kind of decent a piece of music can be. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, did anybody know this was coming out? Like, was this, like, announced and were people excited for this to come out? And is it a surprise that it's actually kind of decent? Am I ever going to stop talking like I'm asking a question? How about now? How about now? The music is gorgeous. Each performance is excellent. All of the songs are crafted with love and care and attention. So why am I not into this? 
It's sweet, it's sticky, and it stays with you long after it's done. Sort of like, um, what's the, what's that condiment called? Um, oh, oh, yeah, uh, Marmite. Marmite, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. This is one of those times where, where I wouldn't say that I enjoyed it, or that I even like it, but it is incredibly effective at creating this overwhelming sense of dread. And for that, I respect it very much. Yeah, the frequency modulation's definitely there, but honestly, I wish there was a little bit more amplitude modulation, if you know what I mean. I'm saying it's good, but it lacks the same drive and experimentation that made Big Fish Theory so good. Am I a nerd? Hmm. That's a weirdly specific one, but okay. Wait, why did I put this album on here? I didn't listen to this. What's that? I listened to it five minutes ago? <laughs> if you say so. Man, remasters can feel like such a dumb, cheap ploy to just ooze out another dollar from the unsuspecting public. They had nothing new to the overall experience. I swear to God, Giles, if you even touch the guitars on Martha, my dear, I will do to you what Ringo did to the concept of a steady drum beat. Oh, yeah. Not an update, but more of a correction. His name is Giles Martin, not Giles. Uh, sorry, Giles, if you ever watched that. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I expected out of a Tenacious D album. Though I will say the skits were terrible. Absolutely ter- I know it's a cartoon or it's supposed to like follow the plot of a cartoon, but oh god, I, I hated them so much. A little bit more understated than what I was initially expecting, but I mean, a, a yeehaw is still a yeehaw, you know? Yeehaw, uh, finds a way. Oh, shoot, I wasted the Jeff Goldblum line on the wrong album, didn't I? I was so ready to just tear into this album and rip it apart and make fun of it mercilessly, and this band had the gall to put out a pretty decent synth rock album. Thanks. Thanks for that. Really. If there's one thing Mike the Snare's become known for, it's destroying albums that only teenage girls and babies would like. Better put the babies to bed. Today he's looking at the new 1975 album. Let's see him tear it to shred. I really like it. I, I really, I can understand why people wouldn't like it, but... Oh boy, do I like it. Got a lot of hate when it came out, but honestly, that last Mumford & Sons record wasn't all that bad. I mean, the instrumentation made them sound like every other rock band out there, and Marcus's lyricism got way, way dumbed down for some reason. But if you could get past that, there, there was some decent songs on there. And at this point, if you're wondering, is he just trying to vamp for time because this new one is so utterly devoid of personality and substance that there is literally nothing to say about it? Pleasant. In the dictionary, you know what you'll find? The new Jeff Tweedy album? No! The definition of the word pleasant, which this album is. Look, you can throw whatever criticisms you want at this record, and there are definitely some valid ones to be had, but at least for me, my god, the second the flute hit on that opening track, I was I was absolutely hooked. Put flutes in everything. I mean, is there any music out there that can't be improved just by putting flutes in it? I guess we answered that pretty quickly. I think this album is good. 
Yeah, 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 I, I think it's good. Take the sensibilities of a 90s R&B record and pair them with the production of a modern R&B record and you have something that makes you just sit back and think, man, Mariah Carey is just so good at singing, like really good at it. Sonically it's, it's whatever, but I was actually pretty surprised by how lyrically mature it was about the, well, paints are growing. Man, I want to be like Alicia Cara when I grow up. Hold on one sec. Hello? I'm older than her? Hey, buddy. Come on. Hey, hey, buddy. Come on. Come on. It's time to wake up. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Let's, uh, let's get going. Let's get going. Ugh. Come on. Uh, what, 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 what's going on? Who, who are you? Come on, dude. You've been asleep for over a month now. So, so what? That, that's how long I normally sleep for. Well, yeah, but there's been a bunch of records already released in 2019. Plus, there's a couple from 2018 that you missed. So, come on, buddy. Chop, chop. Let's go. Uh, just, okay, just just give me a second. I need to get myself awake. Um, also, like, what what's your deal? Are you, like, a new character or something? Or? No, no, I'm, ju I'm just here to kind of get you back into the swing of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to cease to exist as soon as the camera cuts away from me. Well, that's kind of depressing. I mean, you could you could stick around. I'm sure we can find something for you to do. Oh, right. To paraphrase a character played by the person James Blake is currently dating, I would say he outdid himself, but he's always been great. So he simply did himself. Um, let me put it this way. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do next. This is it. This is it. You can do it. Come on. Come on. You can just almost do it. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Definitely more of a mound than a proper hill, but like, I'd, I'd say it's still worth climbing. Also, is there a reason why it's split evenly between tracks with vocals and instrumentals? Like, I, I, I feel like that's such an intentional decision to make, but I don't know what the heck it adds to the album. I do not care. One of the best things about running this channel for me is that it gives me the chance to break out of my comfort zone and listen to records that I probably wouldn't have listened to otherwise. This new 21 Savage record is a great example because I probably wouldn't have checked it out if I didn't have a specific reason to, but I was really pleasantly surprised by how diverse and mature its take on trap is. Man, 21 Savage is growing up so fast. Soon he'll be 22 Savage. Alright, come on. Come on, this is it. This is it. You can do it. Come on. Come on. You can just almost do it. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, so like, I liked it. But this is also the first Bring Me the Horizon record I've listened to in full. And from what I understand, this is not typically how they sound so you might feel the complete opposite way for totally valid reasons. In fact, it would be interesting to go through their discography and then listen back to this to see if I still like it, uh, with that added knowledge of their uh, musical trajectory, if you will. If only I had a series that went in-depth on an artist's discography, sort of like these quick reviews, but instead of uh, recent releases, it would be a band's full body of work. If only I had that series. Dude, you know this is your channel, right? Like, you can, you can make that happen. You can make anything you want. Yeah, you're right. And hey, you're back. Oh, never mind. In case any of you are curious, yeah, this is, this was the, like, teaser for the first ever Deep Discog Dive. And I think it came out the week after the first QRB of 2019. Um, yeah, thanks, Bring Me the Horizon. Don't want you in my bloodline is a weird way to tell a guy off to the point where I'm kind of concerned as to how into hereditary science Ariana is, but otherwise I, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know, man, it's, it, it's fine, but LCD just doesn't grip me the same way they used to years ago. I guess you could say that I'm misplacing my acrimoniousness. 
You gotta hand it to Pump on this album, because he's managed to create something that's pretty dichotomous. Because this album is simultaneously a condemnation of the American educational system, while being a stunning reminder of why it's so necessary. Nice going, dude. I mean, yeah, but like, also, no. Let's see how this ranks on the Hosey scale. Still a ways from hosiest, but yeah, you know, it's getting there. This one warmed up on me more after I saw Hosier live later in 2019, which by the way, once he's back touring, go check him out. I highly recommend it. He's great. Uh, it's not incredible to me now, but I'm hoping whatever his next album is gets him closer to hosiest. I know some of you are disappointed in this record, but look on the bright side. According to Google, there are over 10 million colors that the human eye can detect, and Weezer's only named six of their albums after colors, so they've, they've got to make another good one eventually. Not because it's bad or anything, I, I do like it, I just don't think it works for this quick review format. I, I think I need more time to sort of uh, ruminate on it. Um, uh, but if you want, you can use this to get a slushie at 7-Eleven. Uh, surprisingly, they will uh, accept this. I think it's about time I cash in this IOU. So I listened to this just a few hours ago for the first time in ages. I'll say this. I think it's a great companion to A Seat at the Table, the record Solange made before this one, and one that I really enjoy. I also don't think it works without the context of A Seat. It's really fragmented, and at least to me, I don't think the ideas presented really get the chance to develop. But that said, that might be the appeal to you, and maybe this will speak more to you than it did to me. Um, I, I could see people falling in love with the fact that it's more vibe, uh, or centered, or focused more on vibe instead of proper structure. So yeah, if that sounds like you, make this the soundtrack to your next 7-Eleven trip. <laughs> Why would I ever listen to this overproduced pop garbage when I've already made the best Avril Lavigne album that's ever gonna exist? It's been four nights in a row since I could sleep well. I toss and turn, my mind juggling a million different thoughts, all culminating in one eternal question. Were fools always this good? I would have loved this when I was in middle school. And I don't think I mean that as a diss. Hmm. Call it a case of mismanaged expectations, because I feel like I should like this way more than I do. But you know, there's still some good ballads on here, some good bangers. Why, why on earth there's a ukulele track on here though? I, I couldn't tell you. If for whatever reason you happen to be driving on the highway one day and you look over and you see me headbanging in my seat, belting like nobody's watching, first of all, I, I swear I'm a good driver, and secondly, blame this album. I don't really disagree. I can safely say that the band does not fumble the ball here. Get it because of the, the band name and the fact that the album's about transitioning into fatherhood and fathers sometimes tell really bad uh, dad jokes. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not using this one. Can I review the new Lizzo album now?
I'm just kidding. I'm just having some fun. I, I, I think this album's pretty great. Easily one of the most confident and self-assured pieces of music to come out this year. I first listened to this while I was doing laundry, and I don't think I've ever done anything as confidently as I did that laundry. Beyonce got me out here wishing I did marching band when I was in school. Also, that concert film is really damn good, too. <sighs> oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I should just do that. Wow, I, I feel nothing towards this. I was trying to figure out why I enjoyed this album way more than I thought I would, and then I found out that Owen Pallet, a ranger extraordinaire, and the mind behind one of the most underrated bops of the past decade, produced it. And it all made sense. If you saw my review of Oxnard, you might remember that the production, specifically the flutes, made up for some of the lesser qualities of the album in my eyes. And according to my research, the flutes hit about 30 seconds earlier on this album than they did on Oxnard. So clearly this is the better album. Everybody say it now, put flutes in everything. <laughs> I'll tell you what's not abstract, the quality of this album, huh? Huh? Is it messy? Sure. Is it bloated? Maybe. Are all the songs winners? Your call. Is it still great? Yes. And will I be wearing exclusively cardigans for the next few months because of this album? No. No, it's gonna be summer soon. Why, why would I do that? It's good! It's good. It, it, it's really good. It's really good. Um, it's definitely not as good as Emotion, but then again, I think part of what made Emotion so special was how it came out of nowhere. Going into this, all I wanted was proof that Emotion wasn't a fluke, and I can safely say that it wasn't. The best song on here is the outro on the very last track. Make of that what you will. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... The National, the band The National, put out an album that could be described as sprawling, loose, and meandering? If it wasn't so unsurprisingly excellent, I'd probably think that we were living in some sort of dystopian, upside-down, bizarro universe. I should have brought this on my last fishing trip. Because there are so many hooks! And I'm here. This is like my eighth birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese all over again. With thrilling lyricism and stellar inventive production throughout its runtime, I can safely say that I will be returning to this album for many months to come. One of the most boring rap albums to come out in a while. The guests add nothing new to the music, uh, uh, the production is derivative, and most of all, logic to And most of all, Logic uses the same hackneyed lines over and over again. Ah shoot, this is the wrong review. So you know that video I put out about AI and music? And I ended it by saying that AI could be a great tool for composers, and how great music doesn't come from the tool, but from the artist using it? Well, well this, this album is, is that. I liked it. I really liked it. I was captivated by the production throughout, and I found Tyler's lyrical take on Heartbreak to be very relatable. In fact, I was surprised by how much I liked this, considering I wasn't head over heels for Flower Boy.
guys, guys, please, guys, no, I liked it, I swear! Ah, <sighs> what a relaxing evening. Caught up on all my work, no anxiety really to speak of. Oh, you know what? That new Black Midi album came out recently. Everybody's been so hyped for it. Let me put that on. I'm sure that'll be a perfect soundtrack for my evening. Play it again. I gotta respect an album that features an interpolation of the Nutcracker Suite underneath the lyric, Can't you hear outside of your supreme hoodie the wind that's beginning to howl? I sure as hell don't like it, but I respect it. I don't know if I could call this his best solo album yet, but it's definitely his most approachable, even if the lyrics are expectedly bleak. It's like getting a hug from the void. Why on earth am I surprised that Bruce Springsteen is good at writing songs? Everybody always says Uptown Funk gon' give it to you. But nobody ever asks, what you gonna do when Uptown Funk takes it away? <laughs> Come back, Cheryl. <laughs> it, it, it's fine, it's fine. So here I am at the Discourse Void, and I'm just gonna shout in my take on this new Lil Nas XEP real quick. <clears throat> hey! It's pretty alright! Surprisingly diverse, even if none of its ideas are particularly well-formed. Also, Old Town Road is a novelty, but a banger nonetheless. All right, yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you all next time. Oh, hey, uh, can I get my parking validated? It's bland. Jack, it's Mike. Listen, I know that I didn't really enjoy your last solo record all that much, but I just wanted to call and congratulate you on this new Racketeurs record, because uh, it's actually pretty good. What do you mean Jack White doesn't own a cell phone? What do you mean, how did I get this number? What do you mean that last solo record was good? Okay, yes, it's great. It's the same quality dance pop production and songwriting that Hot Chip are known for, and you should totally go listen to it. But what on earth is that album cover? It looks like my tie-dye jacket from my high school's Beatles-inspired production at Twelfth Night. And no, that is not a throwaway line. Look, these guys can do all that they want to try to remind us of their glory years, but just rehashing the past without any signs of growth or change is disappointing, and the album suffers because of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get to work on 12 more videos on So Bad It's Good Music. In an attempt to liven up my album listening and ensure that I'll have as many concussions as possible before the fiscal quarter ends, I've adopted this new strategy where every time a song ends, I thwack myself in the head as hard as possible to forget it. Uh, that way each song sounds new, and each lyric is a fresh discovery. Um, for the record, I do not recommend you try this at home. Uh, I've adopted the Pokemon mentality when it comes to concussions. I've just gotta, just gotta catch them all. Um, oh, a song just ended. <clears throat> Oh, Chance is married now. Good for him. <sighs> I mean, some, some of it's fine. Some of it I'm never listening to ever again. It has no business being 77 minutes long, but I feel or hope that it's more because Chance wanted to go above and beyond and less because he wanted to game the streaming model. It's not the best. It's not the worst. I just... I, I wish I cared enough to be disappointed. <laughs> A combination of two of my favorite things, quality singer-songwriter jams and the ever-approaching darkness. Ah. Full disclosure on this one, I think I put this QRB out and then maybe a week, a week or two later, 
Dave Berman, the guy behind Purple Mountains and Silver Jews, uh, took his own life. Um, so I, I wasn't making this joke after his death or about his death or anything like that. But if, if you haven't heard the Purple Mountains record, give it a shot. It's a very good record. It's just a bit dark in places, especially given what we, you know, how things panned out. <laughs> Sure, it's good and well arranged and beautifully produced and Jacob Collier is a massive talent who just happens to be around my age, but like, it's, it, you know, I've, I, I've made music like this too. You know, it's, it's not that hard. Um, you can't, you can't hear any of it though, because it's all above 20 kilohertz. That's, that's where, the, that's where the real music is. So I really wanted to review this Ed Sheeran album, but I kept running into an issue with my computer and I was hoping somebody could help me out with it. So I've got it loaded up on Spotify here. Clearly it's it's playing down below and my speakers are on and they're turned up, but I, I just, I, I hear nothing. Um, so if anybody has any idea of what this could be, uh, please leave a comment down below because I, I'd hate to believe that this album is just a bunch of meaningless sonic nothing. Um, that, that would be a real bummer. No. No. Music this year didn't need to continue once we got a song with a ska beat talking about beating up horse jockeys. I, I think I think we're set. Stupid horse, I just fell out of the Porsche. Lost my money in the bank account, oh no. This album's like a big old potluck. You've got a brisket for the main meal, you've got some nice artisan bread for your carbs, you've got some salad to kind of cleanse the palate, you've got a weeks old macaroni salad with cat hair in it. To this album's credit, it does have an eclectic variety of artists and some pretty enjoyable bops, but it does not have Donald Glover and Beyonce singing Can You Feel the Love Tonight in the afternoon. So... It's going to drop it a few points. Uh, it, it's fine. It's some, some decent production. I don't think I'm going to return to it anytime soon, but I didn't hate listening to it. In fact, I'm feeling that way about a lot of these albums. Not, not that they're terrible or anything, just uh, it feels like a come down after how many great albums we've gotten over the past two months. Uh, there's got to be, there's got to be like one album that I'm missing. Like. What's the one album that everyone on the internet's been talking about? No, no. You know what? I'm just gonna just gonna go back to my book. Oh, Chance is married now. Good for him. here at the YouTube headquarters in uh, sunny California. Uh, I am here to pitch them my 12-part mini-series on musical legend Crazy Frog. Um, now, I haven't actually booked anything or, you know, scheduled or reached out to anybody, uh, but you know what? History isn't made by those who schedule things and who respect people's time and boundaries. Uh, Crazy Frog sure didn't, and look where that got him. So, anyway, here we go. I've been given a restraining order from YouTube headquarters and from every zoo in the state of California? Well now how are we gonna do the episode on Crazy Frog's anatomically correct body? Once again, I actually filmed that during a trip to California. Uh, I think YouTube's office was, or one of YouTube's offices, was close to the San Francisco airport. And we had time before our flight, so my brother drove around a bit as I filmed that. So massive thanks to my brother. And uh, if anyone from YouTube is watching this, I'm still waiting on my request to lift the restraining order. So if you guys want to get back to me on those emails, uh, I'd appreciate it. This album is... Nope, nope, don't you dare. That is low-hanging fruit even for you. What? This album is very enjoyable? No. Is a reminder of why Young Thug is such an enigmatic pop culture icon? No. Is filled with quality contributions from its guest rappers and producers, and that one dumb verse from Machine Gun Kelly that was added in after the album was already released? Yeah, that was dumb, wasn't it? But no. What then? I'm, I genuinely don't know what you think I'm gonna say. Huh. So you're not gonna say it. Um, in that in that case, I apologize for assuming. That's my uh, that's my bad. No, that's fine. That's fine, dude. I I accept your apology. Um, what wh what did you think of it? Oh, I thought it was so much fun. Damn it! 
I definitely prefer the overblown electro folk freakout that was 22 a million, but let, let's be real here. I love this record the second Justin Vernon said that he fell off a bass boat. No way. No way. I'll give kudos to the band for trying this new direction, and there are definitely some good songs on here, but I, I get the impression overall that this will eventually be remembered more for its place in the band's history rather than the actual music. Oh boys. All right, come on, bring it in. Give me a hug. Uh, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this. I mean, look on the bright side. You've made your best project since the Saturation Trilogy. Yeah, I can, I can dig it. You're such a weird dude, Post, and, and you got a nice voice, and you've clearly got the money and resources where you can make what you want to make now, and having Ozzy Osbourne on here is a neat move conceptually, but oh, you just keep making the same bland music over and over again. Arr, I'm so mad that you're bland. Damn, I really like this one. Now, this was good. Good hooks and great production all around. Heck yeah. Thanks, JSOM. My biggest issue with this album at the moment is that it makes me wish I was listening to another different album. Like, what if Taylor Swift made a Baroque pop album and got, like, John Bryan or one of the Desner brothers to produce it, and she brought on, like, Joanna Newsom, Andrew Bird, Fiona Apple, Y Music. She, she could keep Jack Antonoff and Max Martin and even Ed Sheeran if she wanted to. Like, I feel like they could fit in that aesthetic somehow. This went on for like another 20 minutes or so, but I, I think you get my point. Our lives seemed so much simpler 13 years ago, until one musical act dared to challenge our preconceived notions of what art could be. But just as we started to listen, they were gone. In those 13 years, our world has changed irrevocably. We find ourselves asking more questions about the planet we occupy, the lives we live, and the art we make. But one question looms large over all. What makes a frog go crazy? This was gonna be so good, like, ah! Uh! This miniseries could have been incredible, but clearly YouTube and their bodyguards couldn't see what was in front of them. Oh yeah, and the new Tool album's pretty good too. Uh, gripping on first listen, somehow worth the 13 year long wait. Um, now that we have those guys back, how about we get this musical icon back, huh? Anybody? Okay, it's October now. I just did a whole bunch of big albums for the last QRB. The slate should be clean for a bit. Time to nap until top 10 season rolls around. <laughs> There's no rest for me, is there? Look, I'm sorry, neighbors, but it's a medical condition. According to my doctor, I have to blast Gone by Charlie XCX featuring Christine and the Queens at all hours of the day. W why are you being so insensitive? Why do you keep when the water runs? Why do you love if you're so mistaken? absolutely spellbinding. It's probably my favorite thing he's ever done. It's like taking a drive on a beautiful day, but then also being asleep and dreaming that you're driving on a beautiful day. Multiple layered beautiful days, multiple layered drives. P please don't sleep and then drive and then die and then sue me. It's like all the best parts of No More Shall We Part, Push the Sky Away, and Skeleton Tree all wrapped into one. No, it's fine. You can pause to go listen. I, I don't mind. I encourage it, in fact. I've got three iced coffees in my veins. I'm thinking about dumb stuff I did 10 years ago, and I'm listening to the closest sonic representation of being extremely online TMCR. I am anxious, and I am loving it. 
I've finally done it. I've built the ultimate hot take machine. With this, I'll be able to spit out burning hot takes so I can get that engagement money. Here we go. Damn it! I've made the coldest take possible. Yeah, I mean, I had a whole nice top 10 albums of the year list drafted up, and now this album's just completely ruined it, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. Who, who's mad? Not me. You're, you're mad. You're the one who's mad. <laughs> oh, the strings. Uh, I, I wanted to like this. I really did. And the production is neat in spots, but overall it just, it didn't click for me. That said, I have seen people on theonlineplace.com who are very happy that this exists. So for them, I'm, I'm happy. I'm sorry, I just, th th this album's been staring at me for like 20 minutes now, and I just, I think it wants to fight me? Yeah, yeah, buddy, I'm looking at you. You've been looking this way for a while now. You wanna, you wanna throw hands? Is that, is that what you want? Okay. Here we go, man. Come on. Yeah. Show me what you- Ow! Oh, jeez! Oh, oh, man! How, how is an album beating me up? Oh, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, oh, it's real good. But then again, is it a surprise that Danny Brown is good at rapping and that his production is stellar? I, I, I don't think so. Man, so much great stuff has come out over the past month. It just reminds me of why I love doing this in the first place. And I should be caught up on releases now, so back to my nap. Let me guess, the new Kanye actually dropped? Charlene, pull up the discourse void. Okay, so since I have a music YouTube channel in 2019, I guess that means I'm contractually obligated to have a take on this. Uh, fine, it's, it, it's decent, it's decent at best. Uh, the production is pretty good and the choir sounds great when they're used, but Kanye's verses sound rough in a way that makes them feel like they don't belong in the mix. Uh, Kanye's lyrics also continue to be the worst part of his own music, and overall none of the musical ideas feel like they get explored uh, to their fullest potential. I just, I, I, I try not to let it get to me, but I'm just so tired of the Kanye discourse. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> So let me get this straight, Doctor. You're telling me that there's a hole in my heart that's shaped like Hopalong and Speedy Ortiz, and that you know the perfect album that'll fill that hole. I gotta stop using doctors that I meet at record stores. I enjoyed the heck out of this great grandpa record when it first dropped, and man, that enjoyment has only grown in the years, or like year and a half since. Um, I might even be tempted to name it one of my 10 favorite albums of that year, or at least a solid like 11th or 12th place. Please go check it out. Between this and the album they released earlier this year, I can definitely say they've earned that band name because they've stolen my heart. Aww. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh. Once again, my rest has been troubled by forces much larger than me. I wrestle with my own soul, trying to decipher the one thought that will give my being a sense of true understanding. Eh, I like the first part more, but yeah, this one's still good. This didn't really grab me on first listen, but I'm sure that those of you who are more invested in swans will probably find a lot more to like here. Also, this is a good time to bring up a fun tangent. I once saw John Congleton give a talk about a year after To Be Kind dropped, and he mentioned that Michael Jira wanted a live horse in the studio when they were recording that one song on that album that had horse noises. I mean, could you imagine bringing in a live horse into a studio where this is happening? and being like, no, this is a great environment for you. We stand a queen who writes great ballads in 7-4 and a bunch of other songs that aren't in 7-4 but are still good. Same deal as the Great Grandpa album, Pang continues to age better and better with every passing year. I, I am so excited to see what Caroline Polachek does next. Ugh, 
I'm so close. I'm so close to really liking Ezra Furman. This album's the closest I've come, but there's still just something holding me back. It's nothing to do with him or his music. It's probably more just a personal thing. I'm just... Don't do it. You better not do it. I swear if you do... Don't you dare. Boy, that last track was straight fire, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terrified of David Diggs now. I swear this album sounds like an alternate universe where Ed Sheeran, instead of becoming obsessed with writing pop music based on streaming algorithms, did the same thing but with indie pop and even neo soul. And I know that might be one of the meanest things I've ever said on this channel, but I also like this album, so... In conclusion, Mike the Snare is a land of contrasts. I guess I'm happy for Earl that he's found such a unique lane for his production and lyricism, even if it's not always my cup of tea. But I'll give him this. He definitely deserves credit for getting ahead of the rap accordion boom that's definitely coming in 2023. Don't ask how I know that. It's still coming. Mark your calendars. Don't ask questions. I think it's safe to say that Beck is officially in his elder statesman phase and he'll just do whatever he wants and put out an album every three to five years or so and the earth will keep spinning. Um, in this instance, a chill wave version of Sea Change, that's fine. Next time, who knows? Cry For Me's good though. Coldplay often preach about inclusivity and how we're all one big people on Earth, uh, but this is the first album that actually feels like that mission statement. Uh, they pull from so many different genres and cultures and put them through the, the Coldplay lens, if you will. And yeah, the end result is messy as all hell, but they don't need to try anymore, and I think it's nice that they are still. Looks like they've still got it after all these years. Who would have thought? No, absolutely not. I, I will not stand for this. Yeah, Charlene, get me the CEO of Sex on the line. They need to know something terrible happened here. Harry Styles? Since when are you the CEO of Sex? Jeez. I guess that's one way to get rid of Toxic and Community, but hey, while I've got you on the line, uh, I liked your new album. I thought it was pretty decent. This is fine, but I already have enough women-led synth-pop releases from 2019 for my pentagram, and I don't need to summon any more demons for the rest of the year, so yeah, I'm, I'm sad. And that should be it. Unless, like, Run the Jewels 4 or some other album surprise drops. Um, so while I'm here, let me cover a couple of albums that I've missed throughout the course of the year. This thing is overflowing with ideas and raw emotion, and I can't say for sure that everything on it clicks for me, but Man, I am glad that these guys are around, and I cannot wait to see what they do next. Why did I not cover this before? This, this was quite good. Turns out when you put four great country singer-songwriters in a room together, and they make an album... Yeehaw, you know what I mean? I like this. I just don't know what else to say beyond that. I like this. I just don't know what else to say beyond that. The topics covered here, uh, mental illness and the prison system, are, are very relevant, and I'm glad some of you out there have gotten something out of this. Um, I personally didn't, and I don't want to spoil that, so I'm just going to go stand over here and y'all can enjoy this album. It's okay, don't mind me, I'll just be over here. Y'all can, can have your fun with this one. The song Tricks. That's it, that's the review. He's just so fun. The music itself is formulaic, but Mr. Baby is such a charismatic presence that it isn't that big of a deal for the most part. I wish him the best in the new year, um, and same to all of you. 
Um, I wish you the best, and thank you again for watching this and the rest of the quick reviews for the past year. It's, it's been a blast. One day long from now, when I rise up to that great vibe check in the sky, I shall walk in peace with this album to guide my vibes. Book of Kitronata, blessed be the vibes. Wow, this guy has some pretty solid hooks. I'm excited to see where he goes with this. Oh man, he's just repeating the same hooks over and over again. Uh, they're still good hooks, I, I just wanna hear what else he's got. All right, I'm sure any minute now, he's just gonna move on to the next part of the song. I get strong Rihanna anti-vibes off this one in that it feels like the first time an artist has a clear voice in the musical process. Does that mean that it's good? Ah! But it seems like a step for Selena and I applaud that. Same with this one, uh, at least lyrically. Musically, Halsey's become kind of the same genre chameleon that Post Malone has. And like him, whenever she veers away from the standard pop fare is when I like it the best. Dear Jesus, thank you for answering my prayers and giving us a full album of the Sunday Service Choir, which was my favorite aspect of the most recent Kanye record. Though I will say, dude, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, and this thing is 90 minutes long. It, it does not warrant that runtime at all. Uh, again, I appreciate this bountiful blessing, but, but next time, make it less bountiful, please. Amen. Nice. It, it's nice. I was pretty worried about this one, just considering how posthumous releases can often be uh, blatant cash grabs, but this, this was really well done. Um, getting John Bryan to produce this was absolutely the best move possible. It does sadden me that Mac was getting into his artistic groove right when he was taken from us, but I, I'm also just glad this exists. <laughs> I can't tell if I just enjoyed this album or if I'm on so many layers of irony that I've looped back around and enjoyed it from some irony purgatory. Excuse me, sir, may I please acquire the pop? I love all things related to Wolf Peck and this new solo record by Theo is no exception. Uh, the only thing that it's missing is that sweet, sweet VHS mastering. You know? One of these days, I'm going to make all of you proud, and I'm going to fully, without any hesitation, enjoy an Algiers record. You'll see, you'll see, one day I'll do it. I'll do it, not, not today, not today, but one day. The production's competent, and M's technical skill is definitely there, but this, this just washes over me. It, it feels like anger for anger's sake. You know? This definitely isn't his birds, but it's not even really his birdemic. It's just something in the mi- Well, here they come! I was hoping after the last long video, I'd be able to just rest and relax with a nice, easy, quick review basharoo, but so much stuff has come out over the past month. It- Musicians of the world, stop it! Stop making music. L let a man breathe for God's sake. Kesha said before that this album is her reclaiming the pop music that she became famous for back at the start of the 2010s, which we eventually learned came from a, let, let's say, tumultuous time. So from that point of view, I'm very happy that she got to make the album that she wanted to make. I just wish I liked it more. Uh-oh, someone's a silly Billy. Dan Behar, let me break it down for you right quick. You're looking snazzy here in this album cover. You're looking really cool and fly. You've got your 441 in your hand there, but it's not even plugged into anything. How's anybody gonna be able to hear the words that you're saying if you don't have an XLR cable plugged into your microphone? What, just because you think you made a very good album that's probably your most accessible in a long while, you think I'm just gonna look past this? Nah, dude, F minus minus. Oh yeah, this one. I didn't hate it. Any opportunity to hear Francis's distinct growl of a voice is well worth taking, in my opinion, but by a certain point, I was just hoping for the next Hop Along record. Their last records aged really well, by the way. Really worth checking out if you haven't in a while. What? 
make the album. I'm nervous. Everything's going to be fine. Mike the snare. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Whoa! That is pretty cool. I told you, and you didn't believe me. And I'll never forget it. She's come a long way from putting her hand on a stove to see if she still bleeds. Now I just want to know if she knows how the human body works. These guys really shine when they just get into a studio and let loose. Uh, so in honor of that, this review is just going to be me, you know, letting loose and doing whatever uh, comes to mind. Um, uh, egg. Egg. Oh, I got a new ukulele a while back. Um, I wonder if it's still in tune. Yep, yep, that's in tune. My first time checking out a Muramasa record in full, and I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. There's a real mid-2000s alt-rock energy to that one track with Slow Tie that I really dug. If you only listen to one song off this record, make it that. Grimes has given us her vision of the end of the world, and I'm not saying that I want the world to end now, but if, if it does happen, and it happens in this way, and I just happen to be there for it, I, I wouldn't be too mad. These guys lied! None of these songs are in Spanish. All I got was really catchy folk punk bangers with some of the most emotionally devastating lyrics in recent memory. It's, it's, it's stupido. No bueno. I'm still not fully on the BTS hype train just yet, but I offer the same defense that I use for the 1975, which is I gotta respect craftsmanship and the effort to go above and beyond when I see it, and this album has that in spades. Anytime this guy whips out that baritone sax and just drenches it in reverb and sinks it way low down in the mix, I, I lose my mind. It is such a cool texture. I wish I knew what to do with the rest of the album. Oh yeah, baby, real rock and roll is back. No trap beats, no Swedish songwriters, no features. Just listen to the grit, the roar, the snare ring, the group chants, the tempo, the big muff. I I'm being told that this montage is of bands that aren't actually Green Day. Uh, is, is, is that them? Is that No, that's not them. Yeah, keep going, keep going. No, that, that's not them either. Uh, keep... Oh, okay, yeah, there we go, there we go, that's that. Uh, so anyway, Real Rock and Roll is back. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well in quarantine, and if there are any of you out there who can't isolate for your job or whatever reason, I hope you're staying safe. Me personally, I've been in quarantine for about a week now, and you know, I've been keeping sane and things are pretty normal around here. Uh, the only major thing that's changed is that you might notice my, my glasses are gone, and I, I don't want to name names or anything, but it's, it's because of this little prima donna over here. I don't care what your new contract says. You're a microphone. Why do you need glasses? You don't have eyes. Look, just because I don't know how to read, that doesn't mean you get to manipulate me like that. I'm the one running the show here. Well, it's a good thing that I got these new glasses. Um, what, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, so uh, things are normal here. An immaculate and wholly comforting listen. And as someone who just argued contract details with an MXL V250, I will take all of the comfort I can get. Uh, I wanted to like this more. Do you want to know how in tune I am with this ferocious album? When I first saw the title, the first thing that came to mind was, just by word association, Smash Brothers Melee. And when I looked into it, that's actually what they named the album after. So this is already my number one album of 2020. I don't need to hear any more music for the rest of the year. It's a delightful little slice of pop rock, but I don't mean to be rude, but why is this getting so much attention? You know, you know what? Let me consult the void real quick. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wait, does that mean I should have done one of those dances for this review? 
It might have just been my low expectations going in, but I enjoyed most of this record and thought it moved at a great pace, even though it's like an hour long. Man, what a good time for bunnies. The singles were really good, the singles are still good in the context of the album, and even if nothing on here matches them in quality, I'm still glad that the singles exist. All the things that can make modern day trap albums a slog, to me at least, are here in some form, but even still, this is probably the most compelling version of Uzi I've heard ever. Pretty much. It's the first trap album in ages where, even after its hour plus runtime, I wouldn't mind hearing more. Yeah, that wasn't bad either. It's a wonderful time to get into the decision tree business. Might I suggest partaking in this one I made about the new real estate album? You know, I think I figured out why some people are so lukewarm over this project. Um, get, get a load of this. So, you do some of this. Clear that out of the way. And then, yeah, see, that's all you had to do. They just, they misspelled Z. Best thing he's done since House of Balloons? I still anxiously await Sufjan's proper follow-up to Carrie and Lowell, but he and his stepdad making the sci-fi love child of Age of Odds and Enjoy Your Rabbit? I will eat that up. It's a fine six-track EP. No, Mike, uh, I think you got that wrong. There's nine tracks on this thing. No, it ends at Rich. Dude, what are you talking about? There's three other tracks after Rich. The album just- No, those last three tracks don't exist. I'm beginning to think that there will always be an intrinsic, scattered quality to Donald Glover's musical output. Don't get me wrong, he has put out some incredible stuff, his singles usually slay, but I don't think I could say that he's ever put out a consistently good, cohesive album, this new one included. Still, when this album works, it works incredibly well, and I'm just glad that he... Wait, what, what happened to my glasses? Pop filter, you too? <sighs> Wearing masks with glasses sucks. I think it loses its way on the last two tracks a bit, but even still, I have not heard a collection of synth pop dance bops that was this consistently excellent since... I mean, man, I'd have to go way back in my memory to think of something comparable, but... I would probably have to say Eiffel 65's Europop. Another quality assortment of space funk turbo jams by Mr. Cat, plus a variety of guests that all bring their A-game. I love Lewis Cole. Me too. This is a Lewis Cole appreciation video now. I'm tempted to say that this is their best album since Is This It, but I think an even better compliment is that this is the first album by them that feels like it can exist outside of that album's shadow. The full band collaboration that they've been pursuing since Angles really paid off here, and for the first time in a while, it just feels like they enjoy making music together. I'm happy for them for being able to pull it off, and happy for me for listening to it. Yeah. Go me, I'm the real hero here. By the end of it, I just wanted to listen to other Pearl Jam records. Which might be a good thing, now that I say it out loud. Sometimes for inspiration, I like to call my grandparents just to see if they have any grand wisdom to impart. Hey grandma, how's it going? The new Eve tumor is their best album yet. Thanks grandma. I didn't hate it that much, I just, I just don't understand why adults would want to make music like this. Ever since the Walkman disbanded, Hamilton's solo music has sounded like he's fronting the house band of a bar you just happened to walk into. On his other records, I would have sat down, had a drink, listened to a song or two, and then leave. But with this one, I'd stay for a whole set. And I might even sing along. I swear it's just coffee in here. I, I'm not at that point of quarantine yet. 
I've got some great news for my proverb fans out there. Are you looking for an album and artist that best exemplify the expression, quality is not an act, it's a habit? Maybe with some well-made Americana tunes? Well, boy, am I about to make your day. If there was any justice left in this world, Rina Sawayama's very good debut would be about to usher in a glorious 2000s nostalgia wave, updated for modern times, of course. That means Wonder Balls dipped in lean, iPod classics that only do streaming, Club Penguin relaunching as a mobile MMO, and Hoobastank 2. <laughs> Never really been into Laura Marling's work, even though I do think she's talented. Uh, but but this new album, I could certainly stand. There was a cool meter shift in one of the songs. That that was a cool little moment. That that's it. That's all I got. Just tune in next time. I'm in a weird place with this one. This is another one of those albums that I don't think works well with the quick review format that I have. Don't get me wrong, it is great. It is staggeringly great. But it's also dense, and I think I need to live with it more to get a really good grip on it. Please don't take that as a criticism, though. It's actually a pretty big compliment. The fact that Fiona and Co. would be able to make something like this is a really big testament to their musicianship. I mean, the last time that I heard a record that was this ornate and lush with detail, I mean, <sighs> It would have to be one that I heard ages, ages ago, but one that still, you know, stands up to the, the test of time. Um, you know, for my money and just off the top of my head, the last time I heard a record like this would probably have to be Eiffel 65's Europop. During these difficult times, we here at Mike the Snare want you to know, we're here for you. For over two years, this channel has been there for you and we will keep being there and here for you. We'll be here, providing videos for you there, which is your here and our there. We'll be here, hearing new artists here, hearing their work there, and giving you opinions to hear on their work there, but here, here, here. Mike the Snare, here for you, there, here. Maybe it's just because a lot of my recent videos have touched on stylistically diverse, unrefined, yet appreciable records, but I didn't hate this one like a lot of other people did. Some tracks work, some don't. I probably won't return to it all that much, but I'm still excited to see what Will Toledo and co. do next time. Look, I don't want to say Charlie's going to be the first artist in the history of this channel to make my top 10 albums list two years in a row, but... I was concerned about this one, but Haley has managed to put something out that definitely stands outside of Paramore Shadow, with its more minimal sound and its more intimate portrayal of her self-care journey. To put it another way, she's passed the business of misery and has come out on top. Some of you might think that I don't have hobbies, but that's not true. I like listening to the new Moses Sumney, loving the new Moses Sumney, cooking, telling other people about the new Moses Sumney. I don't know, man. Do, do you like future? Do you want 20 plus more future tracks in your life? If so, this is it. And if not, have you heard the new Moses Sumney yet? <laughs> Trash. It's solid trap-infused R&B all throughout, but I don't think I'll be going back to it all that much. Aside from that one track with, um, Jeanne Aiko. Wait, didn't she put out a record earlier this year, too? Why didn't I cover that one? I've been meaning to get into Jason Isbell's catalog for a while now, and this latest record of his is a great entry point. I don't even have any jokes for this one, I just think it's really good. I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> I don't love it. I don't love it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh... This was another contentious one. Set My Heart on Fire immediately was one of the most acclaimed albums of 2020. So, um, yeah, pin, pin this one on me. 
this this one's on me because I, I still don't fully get it. It's good. It certainly is good. I'm not trying to say it's like overrated or anything like that. It's just I think the emotional connection that a lot of people found with it, I just I just didn't. But still, if you enjoyed it, then I'm happy you did. And I'm still looking forward to whatever Perfume Genius is going to do after this. <laughs> I hate to bring out the void for this one. Look, 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 it's it's good, it is good, but it is bloated as all heck. They could have shaved off 20 minutes on this thing and it would have been as good as their last record. I enjoy most of the singles and I still admire their willingness to branch out into this whole smorgasbord of new sounds, but I just, I don't see myself revisiting the whole album in full anytime soon. And to close out this QRB, we have the surprise drop of Dedicated's B-Sides from Carly Rae Jepsen. Of course it's good. There are two things you can count on during these difficult times. Carly coming through with pristine pop bops and 0% financing on all 2020 videos going forward. However the hell that works. I don't need you anymore. You don't own me. <laughs> And so, with a single album of self-empowerment bangers, Lady Gaga single-handedly cured COVID-19 and brought people from all walks of life together to throw their asses back in the club. The end. More like, I don't wanna listen to this again. to tell you that a new Bob Dylan album is to some degree good? Probably not. Should I tell you that this new one is good and also unique in that it captures a pensive beauty in Dylan's twilight years? M maybe. I get questions sometimes about what my schedule's like or what I do in a typical day, um, so, so check this out. So at about 6 a.m. I get up and I start by crying to the new Phoebe Bridgers album. I continue that until about 12.30 or so, and then I take a break uh, for, you know, lunch, errands, my day job. And then at one o'clock, I'm right back at it, crying to the new Phoebe Bridgers album, and I continue that for pretty much uh, the rest of my day. So um, that's what a typical day for me is like. <laughs> I remember not really digging their first album, but it did make me interested to see what they would do for their follow-up. And now that that follow-up is here, I mean, I like it more. I just, I don't think they're for me. Where did this one come from? Why is it so good? Who are these guys? Where did they even come from? What is Australia? I always thought of Chloe and it's one of those acts that appears like during the month leading up to the Grammys and then they disappear right after that, but this new record of theirs is quite solid. I, I would not mind seeing them the other 11 months of the year. What's up, Snare Gang? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are attempting the Say Something Negative about the new Haim album challenge. Here we go. Um... It's definitely the closest I've come to fully enjoying an Arca album. Yeah. Okay, look guys, your new album, really good, some stellar tracks, y'all play really well on it, but have you ever considered getting into the TV business? Specifically, a show about a group of alien fighting penguins soundtracked by your music called Go Go Penguin Rangers. No, I think you meant to say horribly amazing. Why? Freddie Gibbs is a good rapper. The Alchemist is a good producer. Put these together and you get blank. At first I thought they had timed this album release perfectly, what with the current cultural climate and the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and other black people by police. 
But then I realized these events have just become so commonplace in the US that no matter when these guys put out a politically charged collection of bangers, their message will stay evergreen. But boy, what a collection this is. They've managed to combine the immediacy of Run the Jewels 2 with the more intricate production of Run the Jewels 3. I, I know music itself won't solve any of the inequalities that permeate our society, but I'm still glad that these guys are here for catharsis and clarity. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. Let's see how many I can bang out before I melt. I'm sorry, neighbors, but Jessie Ware just put out her best album yet, and it's my civic duty to blast it all night. Yeah, I know I've done that the past three months. When we stop getting great synth pop records, then I'll stop serving my country. <laughs> The production is a little too homogenous for my tastes, but I think it makes up for that in Natalie Maine's heart-wrenching portrayal of life after divorce. By the end of the album, you can absolutely tell that the band has moved on from something or left something behind. Maybe like a word or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, for this one, I figured it would be best if I just show you the people who are playing on this record, because it's, it's kind of like a, a super group record. Um, do, do I need to tell you this is worth listening to? This probably won't convert anyone who considers themselves 99 Gex or less, but for those of us already on the Gek train, I think this is a solid victory lap. Especially considering the pedigree of guests that are on this thing. I feel like the 2000s nostalgia wave is slowly approaching with 100 Gex and Rina Sawayama leading the charge, and if I turn out to be right, catch me on the front lines in my moon shoes. Sarah Tudson could have ended this album immediately after the opening line, let's smash to a podcast, tomorrow morning we're crying into a Denny's Grand Slam, and I would still heartily recommend it. Do I really need to talk about this new Beth's album? No. No, I think I'm gonna skip it. Mike, listen, I'm you from the future, and I need you to tell people that the new Beth's record is quite good. Oh. Uh, okay. What changes in the timeline where I don't tell people? Not much, but you grow this beard and no one really likes it. Why does an indie rock band from New Zealand have any impact on my facial hair? You don't wanna know. <laughs> Utterly okay. Remarkably fine. Thoroughly solid. Exceedingly competent. Spectacularly above average. You know, it's not even just that it's good. It's effortlessly good. It doesn't blast you in the face with its quality. It seeps into the cracks of your mind. I sound like a conspiracy theorist right now. But yeah, if you're in the mood for some great R&B or soul, this is definitely worth checking out. Oh yeah, and the cover of Radiohead's Weird Fishes, best cover of the year so far. Oh, what, what happened here? This feels like the band's attempt to make something more cohesive and atmospheric, uh, as opposed to the collection of straight bangers that was Endless Summer. I applaud the effort, and in some places I think they succeed, but... <sighs> I mean, this one could grow on me, but right now it just feels like a disappointment. Definitely the most enjoyable Logic record I've heard in a while. Um, certainly the most enjoyable out of the that I've covered on this channel so far. This is apparently his last album before he goes into retirement, which... I mean, I for one would love to hear his kingdom come, but in case this is actually it for him, I wish him the best as a person, musician, as a father, and as a Twitch streamer. What if Taylor Swift made a Baroque pop album and got like John Bryan or one of the Desner brothers to produce it, and she brought on like Joanna Newsome, Andrew Bird, Fiona Apple, Y Music. She, she could keep Jack Antonoff and Max Martin and even Ed Sheeran if she wanted to. Like I feel like they could fit. Hi Taylor. I'm trying to be trepidatious here because there is a part of me that just wants to fawn all over this because Aaron Desner from The National co-produced it and a bunch of The National's collaborators are on here here in some capacity. I may be basic, but I am not a basic bitch. So with that in mind, I'll say this. 
it's good. <laughs> it's a bit long for my tastes, though I think that's just kind of a quirk of Taylor's albums at this point, but the production is excellent throughout, and Taylor's lyricism is the best it's been in a while, especially when it comes to her storytelling. I look forward to re-listening to this and seeing how it holds up once the surprise wears off. But while the iron is hot, and since I can apparently predict the future, here are a bunch of album predictions. <laughs> Punk surprise drops a country record that releases three weeks ago. Kendrick Lamar's next album is entirely him playing flamenco guitar, and the only guest is Megan Trainor. LCD Sound System drops a visual album that can only be viewed on a CRT TV located by the 100 Gex tree. Ben Folds 5 for fighting. LMFAO reunites and drops an ASMR album produced by Steve Albini. My boy's got his own ringtone. It's the only one I know. It's the only one I know. My boy's got his own ringtone. It's the only one I know. It's the only one I know. I've realized that I'm at a point with this channel where the bands that I cover may actually stumble upon the videos that I make. Uh, so if any of the Bright Eyes guys happen to watch this, feel free to use this quote in your promo material. The new Bright Eyes album is indeed a new Bright Eyes album in 2020. I, I mean that in a positive way. You know? Phil Everham's recent projects have been very focused on death, but this pretty good revival of his Microphones project is different. It's only slightly focused on death. I'm only slightly screaming inside. Man, with that title, he's just, he's just asking for it. Jacob's technical skill is once again unrivaled, but there's something about this one that makes me feel like I'm being held at a distance from it, you know? I want to like it more though, like, Jacob, let me into your world. Let me be one of the 200 tracks in your Logic sessions. Not only has Dua Lipa given us a stellar pop album that's only a few months old, but we've also gotten a fairly good remix album that has way better pacing and flow than it has any right to have. I cannot wait to get down to both of them in the club. <laughs> Not just kidding. Clubs aren't a thing anymore. Also, do I look like the kind of person who goes clubbing? I think the highest compliment I can give this is that whatever he makes next, has a really solid chance of being a phenomenal work. Because this is solid, but it still shows so much potential. It's a good thing too, because my first impression was a little confusing. I accidentally swapped the M and the N in his name and ended up watching an hour of a show called Pop Team Epic. Yeah, I see no difference. The strings. Yes, the strings are gone. Why are the strings gone? One! Because this record is comprised of tracks from last year's All Mirrors, and if you want strings, those versions still exist. Two! Stripping said tracks down allows them to find new intimacy and meaning that may not have been possible with grandiose arrangements. But why are the strings gone? Oh, there are flickers. There are flickers of brilliance on this thing. Caracal wasn't that great, kind of counted them out after that, but they get so close to hitting the highs of Settle on this, and if they just keep pushing towards that greatness, I I promise I will start a TikTok dedicated to me dancing to their songs. Mike the Snare will not start a TikTok dedicated to him dancing to Disclosure songs. This comment was only meant to be facetious. Do not hold him to this in any way, shape, or form, or else he'll feel really bad about it for a few days. <laughs> I was expecting worse going into this, not gonna lie. Uh, Witness was occasionally fascinating, but mostly garish. But this one is just Katy Perry doing what she's been doing since the late 2000s or so, uh, with some added 2020 polish. And if that's what you want, this is it. I would bash this for so effectively staying in its own lane, but I did also just praise the new Bright Eyes album for basically doing the same thing, so... 
stream both for clear skin, I guess. They think I'm so easy, don't they? Brandon and his kill boys think that just because they were heavily inspired by the war on drugs, a deeper understanding, and they recruited the same people who worked on that record, plus others like Wiseblood, and they combined that with their own springsteen light stylings, they think I'm just gonna fall head over heels for this one? No. No. I am not that easy, okay? I am not. I I'm not. I'm, I'm not that easy, guys. I'm, I'm not, I can't just be, guys, I'm not that easy, I'm not. Number one album of 2020 is The Killers, Imploding the Mirage, ooh yes. Best album of the year of 2020, best album ever. No more music is necessary. No All of the music, music has been made. There is no more need for any more music. <sighs> I, I will be honest with you all. I, I kind of hate this review. Um, a, a bit of backstory. In that last bit where I had all the overlapping voices, I had initially recorded a bit where I would have said something like, I mean, it's okay, nothing amazing, some good songs kind of floated. Like something to kind of counteract it and to show that like I was being sarcastic. But I it didn't really work in the the, the context when I was editing it together. So I cut it. And I thought, oh yeah, people will still get that I'm being sarcastic. And a lot of people thought I was serious, um, which is which is a failing on my part. To be clear, Imploding the Mirage is fine. It, it's one of the best Killers albums to me, but it's also bogged down by filler tracks like every single Killers album is. In fact, if I remember correctly, this was, this was the moment, because I had been mulling over taking a break for a while leading up to this uh, QRB. And I think it was seeing the reaction that this review got and how I had failed to communicate myself properly where I realized, yeah, I need to take a break, which I did for September and October of last year. So yeah, not not a bad album or anything, but I, I didn't really do a good job of explaining or, or making this joke and making it clear that, oh yeah, I'm not really like head over heels for it. I like it, but I'm not um, in love with it, so to speak. So um. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, hey, I just got to thank you again, CEO of music, Seth Binzer from Crazy Town. Thanks for putting all album releases on hold while I was on break. I, I really, really appreciate that. You didn't get that email? In case you weren't convinced that 2020 has been a really weird year, here is the ultimate sign. The Flaming Lips put out a really good album with virtually no gimmicks or nonsense behind it. Except for the bubbles, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it at this point, honestly. Well, this was a nice surprise. If you're in the market for something like the last Harry Styles record, but with more of a hard rock inspired production, I highly recommend this. I enjoyed this a lot. This new Fleet Foxes reminds me a lot of last year's Bon Iver in that they both feel like the best, most accessible synthesis of the artist's work up to this point but I will always gravitate towards the red-headed stepchild they released right before. I love it when I get exactly what I expect out of an album. Uh, in the case of this new Sylvanesso, I expected some well-crafted indie pop, and that's what I got. What a great thing to get exactly what you expect and nothing more. I'm gonna go eat some pasta with light pesto sauce and watch Designated Survivor on CBS. I'm gonna pin my ambivalence towards this one on my not being too familiar with Deftones because it's been getting rave reviews everywhere, but I just couldn't click with it. Man, if only I had a series where I went through and gained a newfound appreciation of an artist's discography. Call it like large LP leap or something like that. There is a phenomenal EP in here somewhere. You cut the track list down to a third, you keep the best tracks, and you have by far the best showcase for Joji's talent as a musician so far. But as is, it's somewhere between It's time to stop! and a spiritual, lyrical, individual spirit. Sufjan kicked off his 2020s the same way he kicked off his 2010s, by releasing an hour plus long, densely packed album of gorgeously arranged electronica that doesn't always click with me, but will probably grow on me over the years to come and will likely be one of my favorite albums of the decade.
If this was 2010 and I was still in high school trying to dunk on pop music with friends while secretly enjoying Emblem 3 or whatever, I'd probably like this, but it's 2020, I have back pain, and I don't know why I'd need music like this in my life. I am appalled at how competent this was. Absolutely disgusted. Let's take a look at the replay real quick. So you go into it here thinking it'll be another humans because of the massive guest list, plus there isn't really much of a narrative through line this time. But just at this moment right here, they pull a fake out and surprise you with their best record since Plastic Beach. This is what we in the business call a big boy gorilla switch em up. Uh, sorry, sorry, I just... I, I didn't really go into this with that high of expectations because all I knew her from was that one song on TikTok that sampled her, but this is one of the best rock albums of the year, question mark? I try not to hold artists to their past work and Sam can do whatever they want artistically. I'm, I'm not, they don't, they don't have to listen to me, but Man, I just wish they would go back to making club bops like Latch. There are some songs on here that are close to that, but I am so tired of this adult contemporary sound they keep going for. Another year, another stellar mix of horrorcore bangers, an exceptional sound design by Clipping, another set of nightmares I'll have where Davi Diggs chases me down a dark alleyway and then starts rapping at me about how immigrants get the job done. Eh. They'll get it next time. There's gonna come a day when one of Tricks Point Never's work fully clicks with me and I preach his discography to anyone who will listen in my local TGI Fridays. Today is not that day, but I feel it getting closer with this record. And once the restraining order from said local TGI Fridays lifts. Another solid release by the gang, but I can't help but feel bummed at how old some of these songs are. Three on E came out back in April. That cover of Something with Bernard Purdy came out, I think, three years ago. Uh, that rendition of Santa Baby came out, I think, four years ago. And that rendition of Point Sienna is like half a decade old at this point. And they even got rid of the part where Theo goes, here's, here's the problem with most tenor male, male vocalists. vocalists. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. It's the best reflection of Ty's skill as a musician and a networker. I mean, look at the track list on this thing. But when the best part of your record is the end of track six, when it all of a sudden becomes an Anderson Pack track, Ty, drop that funk album you've got, please. Yeah, I got nothing. The part in where Mike goes, it's October and I'm tired, might be one of the strongest emotional gut punches I've heard in music this year. And while I don't think the rest of it hits that same peak, there is a certain weariness captured here that very few artists have been able to do. Um, so, well done, Mike. Man, if there's another record from this year that'll make you pine for the return of live music as much as this one does, please don't tell me. I I'm already bummed enough as is. Kinda lukewarm on this one, not gonna lie. Um, it's exactly what you'd expect out of a Matt Berninger solo record, but by the end, it just made me wish for a new Elvi record to come out soon. Also, did you know his last name is pronounced Berninger? I, 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 for this whole time, I thought it was Berninger. My God, I am, I am so in Bernus. The past few years have been turbulent as hell for Ariana, so I'm glad that she's now in a better place and writing music that reflects that. But, but call it a case of the changes, I don't think that this kind of relationship bliss makes for an engrossing album. I know some Ariana fans out there may vehemently disagree, but keep in mind, you killed me back in 2018 for not loving Sweetener. I'm already dead. You can't hurt me. <laughs>
If I ever have to hear Megan go body yaddy 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 one more time, I would gladly delete this channel and start a new one based entirely on competitive planting. But putting that aside, yeah, I enjoyed this. <laughs> It certainly won't change anybody's preconceived notions about the band, but it's still probably their best batch of songs in about a decade. Um, plus, it'll be great for all those 80s hard rock parties I throw, like this one. I just want to feel something when I listen to your music, Sean. I don't care what feeling it is at this point. Anger, sadness, lackadaisicalness, itchiness. I don't know how you'd make me itchy with your music, but I would prefer it over Nothing. Okay, no, seriously. How many musicians signed deals with the devil to release excellent pop albums in 2020? Th this isn't funny anymore. I feel like Miley Cyrus would get a lot more credit for being one of pop's most chameleonic stars if any of her albums had been good. But this new one of hers is probably the best one she's ever made, and I really hope that she stays in this rock lane for a little bit longer, just so that we don't get anything else like, uh, what does it mean? That sign can't stop me, because I can't read! I don't think there was a record from this month that was this easy to enjoy. It's not perfect by any means, but I'd have to really think of something nitpicky to criticize about this one. Uh, like, uh, the, the, the writing on the cover. Who, who writes G's like that, you know? I didn't dislike it, but there was a buoyancy to Bad Bunny's other record from this year that isn't here, and I just think I'm more likely to revisit that one in the future over this one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 We. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I probably would have enjoyed this more had I not just listened to that new Kylie Minogue record and all the other great pop albums from this year. As it stands, it's fine, but I don't think I'm gonna revisit it anytime soon. My test for any Owen Pallet album is, would I prefer listening to it over listening to The Riverbed on repeat for three hours? The answer this time is unfortunately no. It's not bad, but I'm not gonna come back to it again but I'm also interested to see what they do from here. Uh... I was at a festival last year where Left at London performed, though I had to miss her performance to catch a flight. Uh, this EP made me kick myself for missing her, though. Uh, I recommend it, especially if you liked that Rex Orange County record from last year. So I listened to this one earlier this year, and I was pretty lukewarm on it. I listened to it again because one of you recommended it to me, and my impression was way better. So by my calculations, I only have to listen to it a couple more times before it becomes my favorite album ever. Basic math. And to close out the QRB for 2020, we have one of the first records of the year, one that I enjoyed on first listen, but didn't really have much else to say beyond that. And now that it's been nearly a year since the record came out, it's time to sit down and try to express how I feel about it beyond just the fact that I liked it. Um... You know what, check back with me in about a year.